The undisputed facts are as follows. In June of 1997, McKay opened Ann's auto repair shop in a leased building and purchased an insurance policy on property on the premises owned by the business. Four months later, on September 14, 1997, a fire from an adjoining structure spread to the shop building, destroying both the building and the contents. McKay immediately notified Canal indemnity of the fire, and Canal sent adjusters to the site from its independent adjusting company. Several days after the fire, McKay provided the adjusters with a list of personal property that she claimed had been destroyed, which totaled some $35,000. However, she told them that she could not document these items because all of her business records had been destroyed. The adjusters then asked if she could get from the vendors copies of invoices showing the sales prices of the destroyed property particularly in regard to the major items. McKay eventually produced estimates from vendors regarding three major items, but nothing else. The adjusters then asked to see her business income tax statements, which they assumed would establish at least in part the start of expenses for the four-month-old business. These were never produced. By December of 1997, McKay had hired an attorney who duly contacted the adjusters. The attorney was told of the documentation problem and the request for the tax returns, but no further documentation was provided. A second attorney hired by McKay was also requested to provide further documents, but to no avail. By April of the following year, McKay had hired a third lawyer, and another request was made for the tax returns, but they were still not forthcoming. During this period, the adjusters regularly reported to Canal on the documentation problem. In July of 1998, McKay filed suit for the insurance proceeds and also made a claim for consequential damages. In November of 1998, Canal tendered the $40,000 policy limits on advice of its counsel, and the suit continued on the issue of consequential damages. McKay urged a motion for summary judgment on the question of whether Canal had acted arbitrarily, capriciously, or without probable cause in failing to pay the claim promptly. This motion was granted on May 10, 2000, and Canal appealed that judgment. While that appeal was pending, a trial was held to determine the extent of the consequential damages, which the jury fixed at $90,000. Canal appealed that judgment as well, and the two appeals were consolidated here. We first addressed the summary judgment of May 10, 2000. Summary judgment is appropriate when there are no material facts in dispute and the moving party is entitled to judgment as a matter of law. The statute in issue here, which pertinently, pertinently provides to an insurer, including but not limited to a foreign line and surplus line insurer owes to his insured a duty of good faith and fair dealing. The insurer has an affirmative duty to adjust claims fairly and promptly and to make a reasonable effort to settle claims with the insured or the claimant or both. Any insurer who breaches these duties shall be liable for any damages sustained as a result of the breach. Any one of the following acts, if knowingly committed or performed by an insurer, constitutes a breach of the insurer's duties imposed in Section A. 